been given a whisper that there had been untoward uh, behaviour in relation to the uh, funding of this uh, organisation. And what we had was funding by the federal taxpayer of some $9 million towards this uh, program, which was co-funded by uh, organisations uh, from the state Labor government and also local government. What it was doing, Madam Acting Deputy President, was in fact prejudicing the viability of a private firm known as iCook. In recent times, and indeed just uh, yesterday, uh, on June the 21st, media outlets, the ABC and others, uh, started to, to disclose some of the consequences and issues surrounding this matter. Because at the time that this organisation was being established, health officials in Victoria sought to close down iCook on the basis of allegations that somehow a slug had been found in iCook's food preparation areas, that iCook was responsible for the transportation of listeria from their food production to a lady in a aged care facility who unfortunately later, later passed. The full results of listeria testing at the factory were then withheld from iCook Foods for several weeks whilst its contracts were being bid for by a rival council operated outfit, and you've guessed it, named Community Chef. And iCooks uh, was stunned by what was known about the company's innocence before such drastic action was taken, namely the Victorian Health Department closed the show down on the basis of allegations which are now relatively obvious on the evidence provided to us by the media that there was in fact no case to answer by iCook. But Mr Cook could have done substantial jail time in the event that he would have been uh, convicted. Indeed, the allegations uh, in relation to iCook show that in hospital, the patient only consumed food from the hospital with all food provided by the Knox Private Hospital's sole caterer, iCook. So was the allegation by one Professor Brett Sutton. The Department of Health spokesman said ev evidence of the parliamentary inquiry showed four samples from Ike Cook had the same genetic sequence as that found in Mrs Painter, the lady that unfortunately passed. And so the list goes on in relation to the evidence provided by uh, Professor Cook and uh, others to the uh, committee. It now transpires that it appears, and I stress it appears, I don't make the allegation, I just make the observation and that it is now being asserted that Chief Health Officer Brett Sutton signed and issued the order to close iCook Foods. And the consequences of that order was that the government owned loss-making competitor to iCook Foods, Community Chef, secured the business of food supply to aged care homes and others previously supplied by iCook Foods. By the way, since it was set up by federal government funding of $9 million under Mr Albanese, this organisation, Community Chef, has run at a $30 million loss funded by taxpayers. Previously, food 
preparation and the actual food and meals were supplied by iCook in a private venture that did not need that sort of $30 million subsidy from the taxpayer. But the evidence now to hand as reported in the media is that some hours, and this is vitally important, Madam Acting Deputy President, that some hours before the closure order was issued, that very allegation upon which the closure order was issued proved to be false, proved to be incorrect. That is, that the elderly woman who died allegedly as a consequence of eating food supplied by I Cook Foods had not in fact eaten any food, any food supplied by I Cook Foods. So based on those facts, as reported in the media recently, it would appear that the order to close I Cook Foods may well have been illegal. So from the, from, from the facts currently available, there's every reason to suggest that there may have been a conspiracy conducted by health officials in Victoria to close iCook Foods for the purposes of commercially benefiting the government-owned loss-making enterprise Community Chef. Given media reports that Victoria Police are now investigating corruption claims around the iCook Foods closure, the question then arises whether or not the Chief Medical Officer of Victoria has been interviewed or whether or not he is assisting the police in their investigations. And the question arises, at what point in time did Mr Sutton become aware that the closure order was based on a false allegation? This is very serious business. A family company being brought to bankruptcy, closed down as a result of health orders, which the department knew on the evidence they should not have closed down. So at what stage did they officially become aware that the allegations against I Cook were false? At what stage did the person that signed the closure authority, at what time did he become aware? When should he have become aware? And why was that not acted upon immediately by the authorities that the closure was inappropriate. And so the questions remain. Before that closure statement was signed by Brett Sutton, why did he issue the closure order? After the issuing of the closure order, why did he not retract the closure order? Before the litigation of I Cook Foods in the Magistrates Court, why did he not intervene to have the litigation withdrawn? Before he gave evidence to the Victorian Parliamentary Inquiry into closure order was valid before the Parliamentary Committee. After Brett Sutton gave evidence to the Victorian Parliamentary Inquiry, why did he not and still has not advised the Parliament that the closure order has proven to be invalid. And one has to give the benefit of the doubt here that Mr Sutton may not have been aware uh, of all the factual circumstances when he signed the closure order. But he must have become aware somewhere along the way and to the best of my information, knowledge and belief, Mr Sutton has not corrected the record that he... Uh, the evidence he gave to the Victorian Parliament. And by now, he must be fully aware of the fact that the evidence that he gave was not necessarily as accurate as he may have believed at the time or as it should have been at the time. And if Mr Sutton had been aware of the false allegation against I Cook Foods, can he explain how, as the Chief Health 
health officer and the person who authorised the closure, he was not made aware of that. And so somebody must be responsible for this egregious offence against iCook as a business, more importantly, the family, and I think it was about 35 employees that lost their jobs as a result. The iCook matter and the signing of a false and likely illegal closure by Brett Sutton goes to the very heart of the integrity of the operations of the Victorian health system and whether or not a conspiracy existed to close iCook Foods. In the circumstances, Mr Sutton needs to answer these questions immediately on the public record with absolute clarity. Because without such clarity, there will remain very real questions about the integrity of the evidence that was provided to him and the evidence he provided to the Parliamentary Committee in Victoria and the signing of the closure order, which I understand bears his signature. These matters, Madam Acting Deputy President, were the basis of my questions on May the 24th at Senate Estimates. I was clothed with some of this information at the time, seeking information from officials. Understandably, they could not provide all the information being sought, uh, given the passage of time. But one has to ask the question, why did Mr Albanese and Mr, Su uh, Mr Andrews engage on this joint venture, which saw the demise of a private enterprise business? It also begs the question why the Chief Medical Officer at the time signed the closure, which, might I add, was based on evidence that's allegedly a slug had been found in the uh, food preparation area of iCook, which has now been referred to as slug gate, and it would appear as though the slug and the photograph taken of it was in fact planted and manufactured evidence. I hope that is not the case, Madam Acting Deputy President, but the allegations surrounding this are now becoming exceptionally serious. A business has gone broke, 35 people have lost their jobs and high up officials in the Victorian Health Department seem to be complicit in the demise of this business. There are a huge number of questions to be answered. These questions are fundamentally important. They go to the integrity of public administration and why a public authority would be seem to be so desperate in seeing the demise of a private sector operator so that a public uh, uh, authority that was manufactured by Mr Dan Andrews as health minister at the time and Mr Anthony Albanese at the time as infrastructure minister put so much effort, so much taxpayers' money into an enterprise which has been running at a huge loss and has seen the demise of what was otherwise a profitable business. Lots of questions need to be answered, and I hope they are answered as a matter of urgency.